All right, so this one's going to be a little bit short and sweet as it goes for film rooms of mine. Today, we are going to go over Yannick Ngakwe, the free agent defensive end pass rusher. Now, as many of you know, he was on three different teams last year. He forced a trade outside of Jacksonville to the Minnesota Vikings, and then the Vikings ended up trading him then to the Baltimore Ravens midseason and still ended up with eight sacks even though, even though he had very little time to get acquainted with the defenses of the teams that he played for. Now on this one, as many of you know, the main pass rush move for speed rushers is that outside edge rush running along the outside of the left tackle or right tackle, depending upon where you're lined up, coming around the outside edge and trying to swat the ball or get the quarterback at the back part of his drop. Now, on this play, he's done that for this drive, and then he switches it up and brings something else to the table, and we're going to highlight that on this clip right here. This is absolutely gorgeous, as you're going to see Ryan Tannehill is going to perform play action here. Go back to his drop. Yannick has been running outside most of the time. The left tackle has absolutely zero, zero chance on this play. Look at Ngakwe at his plant foot. That is beautiful. The left tackle is set up, ready for that outside edge, ready to push him along the outside. Yannick's change of direction while continuing to move forward is blazing, absolutely blazing, blew right by, this left tackle was left in the dirt, he has no chance, zero chance of stopping Ngakwe from getting to Ryan Tannehill on this play, Tannehill has maybe a second and a half, he has less than two seconds to get rid of this football, and because of that, he has to release this football well before he's ready, and it gets right out of reach of the receiver, now remember, Getting to the quarterback is not the only thing that pass rushers need to do. They need to force pressure on quarterbacks. Forcing incompletions or bad decisions that can lead to uh, turnovers is a major part of what many defenses in the NFL rely on. Especially if you're a zone defense, say like the Indianapolis Colts. This was an absolute beautiful move. Watch how he sets him up. Looks like he's going to the outside, then plants that foot at the perfect time. Goes inside, Tannehill feels the pressure, and it's like, oh crap, get rid of the football. That's gorgeous. Let's go check out the next thing that I really like about Yannick Nkakwe. Now, one of the negatives that a lot of analysis experts, so to speak, say that Yannick Nkakwe is a liability in the run game. What? Man, I've been going through all his film from last year, and I don't see that at all. As a matter of fact, the way he plays, I think he's a benefit in the run game. He always keeps his eyes up at the ball level. Now, that's a difference because on your traditional edge rushers, they a lot of times lose sight of the quarterback and the football. But Yannick always has his eyes up looking at the football and able to be able to change directions when the ball changes a player to get to that player as quickly as possible. Let's take a look at this specific play, and let's see what I'm talking about. Let's go down here. Now, as you see, Yannick is out here on the outside edge. He's going to try to perform that same kind of inside move that we saw earlier, and it happens again. He does the exact same thing to this left tackle. Only this time, the play action actually handed off to Derrick Henry, right? Let's watch what happens as this play develops. Here it goes. Yannick does that inside cut. Gets right by that left tackle. And because his eyes are up, watching, watching the football, watching the exchange happen, he's able then to adjust once he gets past that left tackle and plant again with his left foot this time instead of just his right foot. Change directions and be able to get right on Derrick Henry for a massive tackle for loss. 
You don't see that every day with Derrick Henry. And when it comes to running backs, come on, hitting them in the backfield is one of the best things you could possibly do because it keeps them from getting the steam rolling and able to get them for a loss. This sets up uh, the next down after a loss like this, a massive down. Now, Yannick, it's almost guaranteed that he could go right after the quarterback the next play. This It helps the defense big time when you're able to do something like this. I love Yannick against the run. Now, do I want to see him every down uh, on first down? No. Why? Because Yannick is such a high motor guy when he does play. He exudes so much energy that in the fourth quarter, he would be dead tired if he's playing first, second, and third down on every play uh, throughout the game. So, please, this is great on second, like second, second and fifth or something like that. But, yeah, he's not a liability against the run. At least, not, not from what I'm seeing. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please, take a moment, smash that like button, and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you're notified next time I go live or upload a video. I go live once a week at least 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Friday. And I upload videos all the time for the entire NFL. So please, give me a follow, smash that like button. And until next time, have a good one. Let's talk about big time game situations. Let's talk about you're up 31 to 23, meaning the other team needs a touchdown and a two point conversion to tie this ball game. It's in the fourth quarter, fourth and five on their own five yard line with only a minute 13 left, which means this entire game hinges on this one play. One play. Now, what? It's against the Texans? Yannick and Gokwe spacing off against one of the best left tackles in the NFL. That's Laramie Tunzel, my guys. Laramie Tunzel. And not only that, one of the biggest playmakers sitting at quarterback. Top three, Deshaun Watson. All right. So the, the odds of this, this is so stacked against you right now. Fourth down and five. You're looking, they need this touchdown. Yannick has to get by Tunzel to f either sack or force an incomplete pass by Deshaun Watson. And I'm telling you, there's no one better I would rather have in this specific situation than Yannick Ngakwe because he's got the ability to get to that quarterback. Now, no, it's not a sack. It's, again, one of those forced pressures, forcing him to throw the football in a bad angle, bad situation. About where he wants to throw it at the, at the route, but he overthrows his receiver just slightly. Now, if you watch, the referee comes in and says touchdown, but it's not a touchdown. It gets reversed upon recall because he didn't get both feet in all the way. Now, let's take a look at this at a different angle and see how Yannick completely beats Laramie Tunzel. Now, as you watch, as this ball is hiked, Yannick is taking the outside edge. Now, when he takes an outside edge, he doesn't do it normal. He does not use bend, all right? He's a big, fast guy. I don't see him using a lot of, you know, low-end bend to kind of get under and around. No, he does things differently. Remember what I said? He always keeps his eyes up, right? So he doesn't lose track of the football. Well, if you do that low-end bend around, you lose track of the football. You don't know if he's got the ball or not because you're looking down low. Your head is low. You can't see. He keeps his head up and looks. So in order to do what he does, he has a nasty stiff arm. He puts right on a tackle at a specific point in his uh, turn. What that allows him to do is keep that tackle from pushing him out further. And he's able to get around this edge, this bend. And he's got a direct shot right at Watson right now. And he's able to get in there, get right in his face, 
get to him just as Watson throws his football, meaning Watson's unable to really step well into this ball. You see, he was not able to step into it, which means he's going to float that ball a little high. Which means it's just high. He has to tap the ball back to him and is unable to get it all the way in. That's what happens with Yannick and Gogway's outside pass rush. That stiff arm. That that is beautiful. That is great. Now, does that mean that he's because he's standing up, quarterbacks can see you a little bit better, but he's easier to get to the quarterback for him. And he's always got his eyes up. Love this pass play. Love this pass rush. Forcing the incomplete pass. Normally, if, if he was not under that kind of pressure by Yannick, this ball would have been thrown a lot better. He wouldn't have had to jump up. Fuller wouldn't have missed this. And it would have been a touchdown. Again, game situation. We're, uh, yeah, in the second quarter. And it's four minutes, three seconds. It's second down and only one to go with the ball on the 15-yard line. This is obvious running situation. And if Yannick was a, a guy who was a liability in the run game, why would he be in? Why would he be in? Of course he wouldn't be in if he was a liability on second and one inside the red zone. But yet, there he is, right? Now, what happens Simple fact, Yannick, again, because he's able to keep his eyes up and he's got incredible speed, he's able to get to the ball carrier and force another tackle for loss. And we are going to explain exactly why this play goes down the way it goes down. This is a great play and a fail by the Atlanta Falcons on play design. On this play, this is going to be a stretch play to Todd Gurley to the outside right edge. Now, because it's going to the right, they're not going. To, this whole offensive line is going to block right. They're going to leave the edge pass rusher because he has to run the entire field behind Gurley. Huge mistake. First off, he, as I said, he always has his heads up. He always has his head up, so he knows what's going on right now. Right. He knows when the ball is handed off. And not only that, he doesn't go directly at the running back here. As this ball snapped, you've seen everybody on that offensive light lean right. He recognizes this whole play design heading this way. He doesn't even bite on the quarterback. Look at his angle he's taking. He is running directly behind that offensive line. He knows. This ball ain't going. Look at that. If if Matt Ryan would have held on to the football right now, Yannick overpassed him. But because his eyes are up watching, he's already in a perfect position because he's running along the backside of the offensive line. He knows what's going on because he recognizes the flow of the play. And because of that, he's able to get the football Right after Gurley gets the ball, tackles Gurley, brings him down, two-yard loss. Now it's third and three instead of first down. Why? Because Yannick is not a, a liability in the run game. He recognizes the flow, and he's able to adjust how he brings his pressure, whether it's against the running back or whether it's against the the quarterback, he knows they only need one yard. He knows this is 99% chance run play. And yet, he's able to get there, get the tackle, because the Atlanta Falcons forgot, yo, Yannick is fast. And Yannick is not stupid. Let's go check out the next one. Now, as I said earlier, Yannick Ngakwe was traded from the Minnesota Vikings to the Baltimore Ravens midseason for a third and a conditional. And quite frankly, 
he didn't get a whole lot of snaps with Baltimore, which was kind of head scratching on why they got him in the first place. They had guys like Derek Wolf and Matt Judon and stuff like that already on their team. So why did they trade for Yannick Nkakwe? It's not like they had a ton of extra money either, knowing that they were going to be able to re-sign him after the season. I think this was a win-now move by Baltimore. And quite frankly, when he did play, he only played 50% of the snaps for the Baltimore Ravens. And he did a great job. Great job. Because let's face it, it's not every defensive end pass rusher that can either play left or right side of the line. And on this play, he does exactly that. Let's go over here and take a quick look. As you see, he's not, right now he's moving. See right here he is. He's on. He's over the left tackle, but he moves over to the right tackle. He walks right over there to face Jack Conklin. That's right, Jack Conklin for the Browns. So he could do one way or the other. It doesn't matter. Now on this snap, on this play, he does something that you see all the time with him. As I said, because he doesn't use bend, he keeps upright. He's able to watch the quarterback, see where he's going, and react with him as soon as the quarterback reacts. And that is imperative on this play. As you see the snap happens, he comes in and uses his speed, puts out that stiff arm like I talk about, and just goes, leans in, and power rushes Jack Conklin all the way into Baker Mayfield. Now, there's another guy that gets inside, as we see. So Baker Mayfield is also forced to go out. Mayfield then steps back, goes out towards his right. But because... Yannick had that stiff arm right here. He's got long, rangy arms. Conklin wasn't able to get a good hold on him. When Baker Mayfield come up and, and started running, Yannick and Gawke was able to disengage with Conklin pretty darn easy and change direction because his eyes were right in his face. He was able to see. And now, as we all know, Baker Mayfield is a very good scrambling quarterback, can uh, make backyard plays. When, it, when, when the offensive line breaks down, he's able to get out and run. Now, that's always a benefit. But the hindrance to that is, if you're a defensive lineman, you force that guy to move backwards rather than forwards. Now, if Mayfield was able to go forwards on this situation, that will allow him to either scramble to get yardage, or if he's still moving forward, he's able to throw the football with a little bit more power and accuracy. But because Yannick is able to keep with Mayfield here and force him to run backwards, Mayfield's unable to scramble forwards. He basically has to throw a prayer ball. And because he's running backwards, he has it's all on. He can't put his body weight into that when he's running backwards. So he has to use all arm, which decreases accuracy and decreases power on the football. And because of that, this is just out of reach of the receiver along the sideline. Incomplete pass. Why? Because Yannick Ngakwe keeps his eyes up, can use speed to power, and can play either side of the line. And it doesn't matter. He'll play against the best tackles in the NFL, whether it's left or right tackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that, that inside cut move that uh, he has is not exactly perfect because you need a little bit of space between the tackle and the guard. I get that. I understand. So what does Yannick Ngagwe bring when there's not enough space just to, to pull off that really sharp inside cut to get inside and the guard has the ability to come in and, and help out? Heh. Let's talk about other moves that Mr. Yannick Ngagwe has. So on this play, 
and it lined up right outside that left tackle guard facing the defensive tackle watch this move this is pure beauty all right so he knows coming off right here left tackle is not giving up all this space out here right and Yannick can't go way out here because he's got, you know, the running back in his face. So if he steps out, the running back's going to mess up his move. He's got, he's going to have to cut inside here. And there's not much space between the tackle and the guard. He still plants. Great plant move. But there's still no space. Look at that swim move. Just completely disrupts between the guard and the tackle. Combining that cut with that spit with, with that swim move. Splitting the guard. Both the guard and the tackle on him. Doesn't matter. And Gogway's able to keep his balance. Step up. Get a hand up in the passing lane. Force Baker Mayfield to throw this football before he got through his progressions. Again. Got in there really, really fast. Yes, he had a guy he could probably throw to right here, maybe make a completion, get about six yards or so. But if you watch Mayfield, he doesn't have the time. He's looking in this direction. He doesn't have the time to get to him because he sees Yannick now getting in his face. He's got to go to somebody quick. And he was only on the left side of the field at that time. He was he was working his way over this way, working his way to the uh, to this receiver. But by the time by the time he was could throw it to him, Ngakwe is there. He's already passed both the guard and the tackle. And Mayfield's still looking this way. He ain't got time to look over here to throw. He's got to throw to somebody. Well, he's got a guy coming off the edge over here. He has to rocket this ball. Hard to step into it. And got way in his face. It was a good completion. That is, until the defender hit him and it knocked him out. The fact of the matter was, this right here, this pressure... Forced him to throw a football in a really tight space before he was ready to throw it. And like I said, again, yes, he only had eight sacks last year. But this stuff here, this stuff here is absolute a must. And it's undervalued in the NFL. Yannick has another pass rush move he doesn't use very often. He only brings it out when it's absolutely necessary. And it's against guys who are big and unable to really use their hands to, to, to pad a person. And quite frankly, it's incredibly dangerous when he uses it because they don't expect it because he don't use it very often. Let's look at this play right here against the Jaguars. Again, he's playing on the left, or I'm sorry, the right side of the line right over here. Facing up against that right tackle, Taylor. Watch this beautiful thing happen. All right. He does not always do this. But when he does, it takes these tackles completely off guard. This spin move he has is scary good. Scary good. He takes this outside edge. Right? And, oop. Boom. Oh, yeah, Minshew ain't got nowhere to go. Now, the thing about it is, what makes this scary is, like I said before, when he runs outside edge press, he usually puts his arm out, the stiff arm. So he's bringing his arms up to prepare for that. Right? And that's what's scary. Because right here, it looks like he's getting ready to bring that arm up for the stiff arm. This tackle's prepping for it, putting his arms out to counter it. Look how quickly Yannick Ngagwe immediately rolls 
against those arms. Because of that, tackle has no chance to stop that inside spin move. And wow. See, he doesn't use that often because using that spin move takes his eyes off the quarterback for a moment. Right? But when he does, it happens so quickly. The quarter, the, the tackle has no shot. So, very scary, very dangerous. And he's got moves upon moves that he's able to use to get the quarterbacks. Whether to sack him or force pressure or something like that. So, but the problem is... There's one small deficit that Yannick has. And a good defensive coordinator can get this out of him. Let's look. Now this is something that I've seen a few times so far this year by Yannick. And if we watch, watch the running back. Watch Yannick. Yannick is here. Watch the pitch to the running back. As the running back gets past Yannick and Gagway, you can see he literally lets up on the run. He lets up on the chase. He, he He's not going full speed after him. And even though he gets past him, yes, there's a bunch of defenders there. But this legitimately could have been the running back breaking one tackle, cutting back inside, and gone. Right? All he's got to do is break that tackle from number 41. He's gone. If Yannick would have kept pressing... Had that happened, Yannick could have got him from behind, but he didn't. He just gave up on the play. Completely gave up. We can't have that. Yannick has to understand that while he's on the field, he has to give 110% on every play. That is not a good look for Yannick and Kagwe. Now, I believe that this could be uh, something that's carried over from the Jacksonville days, you know, I mean, there's a reason why a lot of people want it out. Perhaps it had a lot to do with um, the coaching staff, you know, Doug Marone and all of them, not wanting him to really, uh, not really getting everything out of their players. I think if he gets to a good coaching staff with a good locker room where all the players in that locker room make everyone else on the team, you know, liable and don't give up any loafs on the field, let alone practice. They, they, they don't, like the Indianapolis Colts, they don't give up loafs on the practice field, let alone on game day. When you see something like this on game day, it's not a good look. But that's really one of the few things that I've noticed that's a bad thing about Yannick. I want to thank you for watching this film room on Yannick and Gogway during free agency in the 2021 season. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please smash that like button, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're notified next time I go live or upload a video. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen, and I want you have a good one.